fact, uh, you may want to get a copy of not my newest, but one of, this is one of my favorite books, and it's packed full. I mean, there's 400 pages here of teaching on the reality of the supernatural world. In fact, I've done a school on the supernatural realms of heaven. It's over 18 lessons, 24 hours of teaching and training. It is our supernatural school of ministry. This book is so much of what we teach in the school. It's about 400 pages, and it covers everything from exploring heavenly realms, prophetic experiences, angels, dreams, uh, how to activate your spiritual senses, and just all kinds of great stuff on the third heaven and how you can go there. And it's just some really good teaching and history on the prophetic. Volume 1 and 2. Let me I'm, just hold on a minute. Let me tell you what it is. Because it is not a worship CD. It is not even a teaching CD. And uh, what it is is supernatural experiences of the prophets today. It would be great if you all became partners with Morningstar and us. And uh, that there'd be enough to go around. So how many people are actually in the room and you have no idea what I'm talking about? You've never heard our ministry before. This is your first time. Is there anybody? Oh, good. There's a few. God bless you. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't read the stuff on the Internet. It's all lies. I tell people all the time, stay off the internet. Man, I went on there one day and put in my name and went, oh, man. Have you ever done that, Rick? How does all that stuff get up to the top? It's amazing. I think people get paid, you know. But uh, never do that. It's just a bad idea. But uh, we're going to transition here, and, and uh, we're going to get into some heavy things, some deep things of God. Shaka. Thank you, Lord. That over the years, there have been times and places, even months and years, where the Lord has not permitted me to share certain types of prophetic experiences. It's just not something that you can talk about everywhere you go, whether it's a timing issue or just that particular body and atmosphere just is not ready to receive what you have to say. There, there needs to be a stewardship of the mysteries of God. And just because I'm going to take some liberties in this session to freely talk about one of my heavenly trips, I don't want you to get the idea that I'm just flippantly talking about these holy things. So I do want to put that disclaimer out. But because in any other venues, and again, the purpose is not the wow factor. For you to go, wow, what a, that's an encounter. I'm not a dreamer. I have trances, open heaven experiences, angels. I even get taken in the visions of God. I get taken into the spirit. I go into the heavens. But I'm not a big dreamer and dream interpreter. And because I get so much revelation outside of the dream realm, I thought, why go for dreams when I just get it when I'm awake and it's even better? You can get so focused on every detail that you miss the experience and you just don't go into the heavens because you're too focused on waiting for a certain something to happen and, and you're waiting for your body to get sucked up and you miss your trances and visions and revelations because you already have... That's the whole thing about knowing how to be a steward of the mysteries of God. They're just timing and just... You don't just show it, share everything all the time, everywhere you go, blow people away with all your visions. Inexpressible. It's not like, well, you can never talk about encounters and third heaven experiences because if they were real, Todd, well, you would have been like Paul, and it was inexpressible. Paul wasn't allowed to share his revelations, and yet here's you and Bob Jones and all these prophetic people just putting it out there, talking about it like it's, you know, just happens all the time, and it seems to, you know, that's really, it can't be a third heaven experience because you're talking about it. This is uh, my book. I write all my revelations in this thing. I got into the green room and no sooner yes. laid on the floor, I had a, an encounter in which I was taken in this trance. I was taken to heaven. I even asked myself if I was really actually in heaven. If maybe I had somehow God sucked up my entire body, soul. My, it was so real that I, I, I couldn't differentiate whether I was in my body or not. It was one of those true third heaven experiences where whether I was in my body or not, I do not know. 
only will I truly know in eternity whether or not I was literally taken there or just went there in a vision. And it's one of those things God knows and it doesn't matter. But it was definitely an experience. And they were like dove's eyes. They were dripping with, I love you, compassion. His eyes spoke peace. I mean, there's a lot of fear about, oh my gosh, what's happening to me? I'm having this encounter. But that one, just the Lord's eyes brought the message, it's okay. Just calm down. It's me. You're having a heavenly experience. And everything was okay. The moment that I saw his eyes, everything, just every, all the fear, all anxiety, all stress, everything was gone. And without moving his lips, without any utterance of sound, he said to me, peace, I give you. You've never seen. Shades of red, you've never seen. never seen. Shades of red, you've never seen. never seen. Shades of red, you've never seen. In heaven. People would touch you, it would leave like a, an imprint of color. And the Lord's color that was radiating was this pink. Brightest color was pink out of all the colors in this rainbow. And it, the Lord was emphasizing his love and emotions. And I saw these ten rainbows. Then the Lord took his hand and he stuck it inside of my belly. And I realized I was a spirit man at that moment. That I was no longer physical body. But... There was a point in the experience where I wondered, is this my body? Because it was still me. I was still, it was still me, Todd Bentley, me, my personality. And I seemed to still have the way I would look here. I, but I realized it wasn't my physical body. It was my spirit body because the Lord walked up to me and took his hand and went boom and stuck it right inside of my belly. And I braced for impact and his arm went right through me. <laughs> And immediately I realized this is how the Lord walked through the wall and appeared to the disciples. Your physical flesh, absent from the body, present with the Lord. The only way you can go into heaven is I've got to, he did something, he put something inside of me that would enable me to live the experience and still come back. And I saw a lion and a lamb on a hill lying down together. And then I realized there were lions and lambs all over heaven. It wasn't just one lion and lamb. I saw a lion and a lamb and a lion and a lamb and a lion and a lamb. And I can only describe it in this realm as if the, the fresh morning dew that settles on the grass. And the grass was just cut and it's springtime and the lawn was mowed and it's early in the morning and the dew's on the Color grass. of amber. Everything was orange. Everything was golden glory everywhere. It was like a sunset. And I realized this is what Ezekiel saw when he saw the throne and the vision of the Lord and the four living creatures. And he describes the glory of God in Ezekiel, the first chapter, as an amber color. And this is what I saw. Everywhere. And there were eagles in the sky. In fact, the eagles were white eagles. I will talk more about that maybe later. I just, whew, I'm starting to feel this now. It's been a few years since I've, I've shared this like this. Um, there was a stream in heaven that comes from the throne room. And even though the light, the bright, white, blinding light, is, it's like the city is in the, dif, in, the, in the distance. There's this constant white light that's in the distance. And I was like, there's the heavenly city. There's the throne room. But I was in Psalms 23. I was in the Garden of Eden. I was in paradise. And way off in paradise, there was white, brilliant white light. And I knew that was the throne room. I knew that was the heavenly city. And from that heavenly city came a crystal river all the way through. But when I got closer to the river, when I saw the stream, it turned into rivers of oil, milk, and honey. That's how I described it. And I thought, Lord, the, it's, it's flowing with uh, shabba, shabba, honey and oil and it's, milk. It's flowing with uh, shabba, shabba, honey and oil and milk. And, and my first thought is, God, is there anybody here in? I, re, I was not in the heavenly city. I was not in the throne room. I was in Psalms 23. I was in paradise. I was in the garden of he, the garden of God. Off in the distance. Now when I say the distance, in heaven I could see for miles. 
as if it was like right there. And I realized my eyes could see for miles. I, I don't know if it was 10 miles or 20 miles, but something that was two miles away was like right there. It was like I had eagle eyes. My eyesight was so bright that something that was miles away could be seen in the distance. I heard this noise. Oh, oh, oh. That's what it sounded like. And whenever I heard the noise, the ground shook. Miles off in the distance, one single... And it was like a fluorescent bulb. There was a glory radius, six feet. And this guy was so brilliant with the glory, you couldn't see anything else except for white light. But I knew it was a man. And I couldn't see any features, no form, just this white shining light moving towards me and off in the distance, miles away, but yet it seemed right there. And every time it moved, you could feel the weight of glory. It was like the glory was so heavy. I, I need to emphasize this. The glory was so heavy, everything shook and vibrated, and, and the fear of the Lord came, and holiness, and, and, and the very atmosphere vibrated with, like, electricity. And the ground shook, and, and you could hear the weight of glory. Hoom, hoom, hoom. And it was coming towards me, and I saw one shiny man off in the distance, and his face was radiant like the sun. You couldn't see any other feature. And, and I heard the Lord say to me, that's and I heard the Lord say to me, that's Adam. And the Lord said, remember when I put the, I took the sheepskin or, or I took the sacrifice of the animals and I put it on Adam in the garden? I redeemed Adam. My theology is screaming in my head. How can this be Adam, the first man? And then I thought to myself, I want to be there. I just had a thought, a thought. I want to be there. And the, I moved by the speed of thought. As soon as I thought, I want to be there, I traveled 30 miles. And I was there instantly without moving. And I realized, and think there, go there. Think there, go there. In heaven, you move by the speed of thought. Things are created by thought. Conversation comes by thought. You move in heaven by thought. That's why the thought realm is so important. Take captive every thought. That's why the word of knowledge that comes in the thought realm is so powerful. Everything's created in that realm. And so here I am in this experience. And once I was taken to where Adam was, I saw through this bright white light. And I realized this was what the Lord intended from the beginning. Arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This is the great mystery, Christ in you, the hope of glory. This was the intended garden encounter. Walk in the cool of the day with God. And literally the very clothing of Adam was the glory of God. There was no need for any other clothing or covering. It was the very glory of God that covered his body. And this light was like Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. It came right out of his skin. It wasn't something, it was, it was like from the inside of him came out this brilliant like six foot light. And I was able to see in through the light once I got close enough and I looked at him and it was a perfect man. Not one blemish. Perfect symmetry, his entire body. He was actually tall. Like, I don't know if it was 12 feet, 14 feet, and my first thought was, how come he is so big? And the Lord spoke to me about Genesis 6, where the angels had come down and slept with the daughters of men. And the Lord told me, before the flood, man's height, it was normal to be 12, 14 feet. Like today, we have somebody that's 6 foot 7 or 7 foot 2. You know, what's the Guinness Book of World Records? 7 feet something. And we think, wow, that's a giant. But it was normal at that time to be 12 feet, 14 feet tall. There was something about the beginning of creation. Men just were a whole lot bigger then. And I realized that by revelation. And I saw his face. He looked like he was, he was hundreds of years old. I mean, thousands. But he looked like he was in his early 20s. He had the face of a boy, but yet he was old. And his face, his, um, um, his uh, reflection was reddish. His hair was reddish. 